good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Uh, whatever time of day it is that you hear this message, I pray that your mind, your heart, and your spirit are all poised to receive, to accept, and to respond to words of wisdom. Ashe. In the diaspora, the African diaspora, the Yoruba diaspora, there's a big percentage of people who come into the tradition as patients, as clients. You know, you have some kind of a legal problem, you have a health problem, you have a social problem, and you try the doctor, you try the lawyer, you try the, the counselor, and, and nothing seemed to you know, mitigate the problem. And one way or another, you ended up on the mat with the babalawo. And by the end of the saga, you were initiated into something. And, and then you were dubbed a priest or a priestess. But that was not your original intent, right? Your original intent was to solve your problem, all right? There's nothing wrong with that. There's, there's nothing inherently flawed about that particular trajectory. Uh, it's just that that isn't the most traditional way that priesthood comes about. Okay, it's not the most traditional way. Now, in the realm of Ifa in particular, but by extension, this is equally true of Orisha. Your parents would have been uh, priests and priestesses themselves, or they would have taken you uh, to the Babalawo to cast Ifa for you as a matter of course, because that's what, what Yoruba people traditionally do. You know, shortly after the child is born, you go consult Ifa. Ifa says this is the path of fulfillment for this individual. He is marked for this priesthood. She is marked for this priesthood. So they would start immediately from your birth training you and conditioning you for the priesthood. And in the case of Ifa, by the time you get to be about seven or eight, they're gonna send you off to the house of another Babalawo where you're gonna be an apprentice for maybe 15 years. Okay, that is the way it, 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 it happens. In the case of Orisha, you're probably gonna get trained up in your own family home. But either way, it starts off with you learning all of the precepts and the habits and the perspectives and the um, the actual technique associated with devotion to one Orisha or another. So it begins in the most traditional format with devotion. Okay. And so for you in diaspora, for us in diaspora, no matter how you come into this practice, the most pristine and correct way for you to go about your practice is to start as a devotee. Okay, this is why I emphasize training before initiation so emphatically. You, you're a devotee. No matter what you do, if you serve the public or you serve your family or you just serve your own spiritual journey, your first order of business is to be a devotee. To observe your worship calendar. To uh, be in a, in a perpetual state of reverence to be positioning yourself to serve the will of Olodumare and the ancestors and your destiny, right? That's an orientation, that's a worldview, that's a set of habits that will cultivate within you a certain way of being that's different from, you know, just thinking about priesthood. See, because priesthood as, as, a, as an idea is one thing, but you know what a priest really does? The, the, as a priest, your phone is ringing all hours of the day and night. People are, you know, nowadays the people are in your DM and you're in your inbox 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And um, the expectation is that you're available, right? As a priest, they're calling you and reaching out to you at any hour of the day, any day of the week, because when they have a problem is when you're supposed to be available. That's what it means to be a priest. 
when they have a question, you're supposed to be there to answer it because that's what it means to be a priest. And they want you to do that if they have money or they don't have money. Okay? As a priest, you're going to have to be willing to serve people and provide resolution for people even if they don't have money. You know, it costs you money to do what you do, but the expectation is sometimes people don't have money. And as a priest, you've got to provide a service for them anyway. You've got to be able to heal people without telling them that they're sick. You've got to help people solve their problems and they don't want to believe that they have a problem. And the ones who believe they have a problem don't want to accept any responsibility for being the creators and the engineers and the maintainers of their problem. But as the priest, you're expected to help these people to get beyond the things that obstruct them, even when they are in denial. This is the expectation of priesthood. OK, and so the only way that you're going to be, you know, have the mindset to address those kinds of problems and effectively help people achieve the goals that they have for themselves, the objectives that they have for themselves is you can't be doing it from the perspective of, I'm a priest, right? You've got to be in service. It's the only spirit that's going to carry you through. You're in service. See, I'm not, I'm not doing this even because of you or you or you. I'm doing this because of my devotion. I'm doing this because of my service. This is a part of my worship and my practice in revering the divinities that I serve in revering the ancestors that guide me in revering the destiny that brought me here. See, that has nothing to do with priesthood. When you're in a state of devotion and you are serving the deities, when you're serving the ancestors, when you're serving your destiny, you're fulfilling your destiny, you could be doing it as a, as a lumberjack. You could be doing it as a chemist. You could be doing it as an auto mechanic. You could be doing it as a teacher. You could be doing it as a carpenter. Your title doesn't matter. Your title does not matter. It's your intention coupled with the specific skills and abilities that match that intention. Right? You've mastered the art of devotion and all of the techniques that go along with it. Yeah, some people will call you a priest. Some people will, will recognize you as a priest and respond to you as a priest, even if they don't know that's what your title is, right? When I was young, 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 13, 14, 15 years old, people will come to me with their problems. I was that person who, sitting on the bus, people would randomly just start spilling their guts, telling me all their problems, adults, other children. I was the person that the, the you know, maybe the mentally ill people would sit down and have a calm conversation with. Just naturally. It's just naturally. Right. And so when you have that call, when you are charged to show up in the world in a certain way, the way you cultivate it, the way you take it to the highest level of refinement is through your devotion, is through your service. OK, so I want to urge everyone, no matter how you've come into the tradition, no matter what you call yourself in the tradition, remember that at the root level, you are a devotee. Aspire to achieve the deepest, most sincere, most authentic and correct form of devotion everything else will take care of itself. Abo raboye, abo shishem.